You know it's better than eating ice cream and gaining all that weight and feeling yucky afterwards eating digital ice cream because this way it looks just as real and you look at it and don't gain any calories. <laughs> uh, which I feel like is a pretty depressing way to look at it. Imagine this new diet where every time you want to eat something you just model that shit in blender. You're like, oh yes, I'm vicariously living through these 3D models. I'm satisfied. So anyways, uh, in this series of me ma uh, modeling <laughs> random objects, I guess we're making strawberry shortcake ice cream uh, with procedural materials and all this because I don't know, I want to make it. So, uh, let's start a new blend project. I'm using 2.92. You can use literally anything. I say it every time. I don't, I don't give a fuck, okay? <laughs> Pick a version of Blender, we'll use it. So, uh, before we do anything, it's always best to work off of reference, even though I remember middle school lunchtime, I'd buy two of these every time. I depleted my lunch account immediately because I was just buying ice cream. Sorry, parents, if you're watching. Um, I know what this looks like is the point, but uh, reference in case you need it, it's always good to have that. Take it, drag it in, boom. Now you have your reference in Blender. Now, uh, honestly, I'm not going to be using this too much, but uh, just so that it's a bit nicer, I'm just going to orient it so that it's facing, uh, let's say, this direction, okay? So we have ice cream. Let's try to model it. First thing is the popsicle. Popsicle's pretty <laughs> easy. I mean, all these things are just going to be boxes. So edit mode, a popsicle is pretty skinny, so I'm scaling it down on the x-axis, uh, making it around as tall as a popsicle stick, and most importantly, making it as thin as a popsicle stick. You know, you could take a, a good reference photo and do all this, uh, you know, to scale, but that sounds kind of lame, right? I'd make fun of you if I was uh, in your school and you were doing that. Um, once you have this uh, popsicle stick ready, uh, let's just bevel out the bottom because, you know, that's what a popsicle stick uh, looks like. Select these edges, control B to bevel, and I don't think it goes all the way like it connects like this. I don't think that's the case. I think it's something like that instead. Okay, there you go, popsicle stick modeled. Uh, if you're the kind of person who likes a shade smooth, you can't go to sleep, you toss and turn without it. Uh, and you know, you do shade smooth and it breaks your shading. Way you fix that, you go to normals, auto smooth, and that will keep uh, your shade smooth, but only within like a threshold of 30 degrees. In other words, um, the smoothing is not gonna roll over some edge that has an angle bigger than this. Okay, cool, popsicle. Uh, now what? Now the, the base, uh, not the base, the, the good part of the ice cream, you know, some kid out there. You know there's some kid out there, right? <laughs> uh, who's just eating the popsicle sticks. He just throws out the ice cream. It's like disgusting. I don't know why they even pack it there. He just likes that wood. Um, okay, so something like that. Again, make it roughly the uh, size of a popsicle ice cream shortcake thing. You remember that show, Strawberry Shortcake? I think I were all a bit too old for that one, but that one always weirded me out. I feel like that was a, on the My Little Pony trend. Um, okay, so I, I beveled this until it roughly looks like ice cream. I like uh, beveling this way first, and then we're going to take uh, these end gons, right, um, and bevel it uh, this way. I don't like doing it all at the same time because then um, our vertical, or no, our forwards and vertical bevels, whatever. I want to control each bevel individually is the point. That's why I do them one at a time. Um, I think this is roughly to scale. If anything, I think this is still a bit too thick, so let's just fix that. Uh, select everything, scale it, y-axis, boom, popsicle. Okay, uh, so now that we have our base model, uh, let's make it look a bit better. First thing I want to do is uh, take a bite out of it, and it'd be cool if we could do that procedurally. Um, and then once we do that, we'll scatter a bunch of dots over it, etc. So first of all, let's do a bit of a save. I mean, I have my official one, but uh, we'll call this uh, available on Patreon, because if you're not promoting in the middle of the video, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, this one file when we finish it, and after I polish it, it's gonna be available on Patreon. Uh, to take a bite, what I like to do is uh, I, I make a mesh that's gonna be representing what we're taking away. We're gonna be doing some booing shit, um, which is an interesting way to work, because it's procedural in the sense that you can modify this on the fly. Uh, point is, I'm gonna add some more geometry, so with a subsurf, and then we're gonna do a displacement, and this is just so that we get some more distortion, right? Uh, so we're gonna Place it using a texture. What's that texture gonna be? It's gonna be, I guess any of these cloud textures pretty good. And then just soften it like that. Okay, so I want you to imagine that this uh, thing is representing the uh, space of your mouth that's, you know, biting into it. So uh, we can take this, we can hide it, and then with our popsicle, we just add in a Boolean modifier and take the difference, in other words, subtract away the sphere, uh, which I guess we could call something better like bite, okay? Um, and you can see, the, the way this works is we have this bite object that's hidden right now, but you can change its location and change details about the bite procedurally. Uh, point is, you, you just, like, mess around with this until you like the look of it. I'm gonna do, I don't know, something like that with a bit more depth, just so it looks like a more jagged bite. And then uh, play around with these uh, location settings until I like the look of it. 
Okay, that looks pretty good. Could be better, but you know, whatever. Uh, maybe a thing to consider is adding in a smooth modifier afterwards, because then uh, the bite is going to be smooth then, so we can just repeat that a couple times. Okay, uh, it's not the best thing in the world, but we'll, we'll, we'll count it. Okay, apply the boolean. This makes it so that the bite no longer needs to exist, okay? Uh, you could keep it, you know, not, uh, you know, apply the... What am I trying to say? Uh, you could not apply the... Not the materials. What the fuck are they? The modifiers, right? You could keep it procedural, although it does make some things harder uh, with setting the particles down and stuff. Either way, once you have this, shade smooth. Again, uh, if you want to fix it a bit, you could do auto smooth. Uh, even if, by the way, you have a bunch of broken shading and geometry, uh, you could fix this, but do remember, we're, we're just putting dots all over this, so it's going to be hidden. Uh, so I would recommend not wasting the time, okay? Uh, so now we have the bite. Let's uh, scatter particles and stuff all over this, okay? Uh, to do that, first of all, we need an object to scatter over it, and they're kind of like distorted spheres, kind of similar to that bite object that we made. I don't know why they're not perfect spheres. I feel like it'd be easier to make that way, but whatever. Uh, take a sphere. This is going to be the instanced object that we're putting everywhere. Uh, apply a displace modifier, and we can use the same texture as before. And uh, eh, maybe make it a little less strong, like that. Um, okay, cool. We have this. We want, we want to apply it to this. To do it, uh, select your object, go to particles. We're going to make a particle system. And that particle system right now is just going to, you know, emit a bunch of dots, which is great <laughs> if our popsicle is uh, taking a shower, but otherwise, no. Uh, to make it so that we have a bunch of dots that don't move, first of all, we only want to spawn them on the first frame, so they're all going to be spawned at once. Uh, second of all, the physics, we want there to be none of that. <laughs> uh, so now it's just stationary. And then finally, for the uh, spawning, you can see it's kind of... Uh, I mean, it's spawning on the surface, but what I think it's doing is it's looking for areas with high vertex counts and spawning around there. Uh, set this to random. That'll make it more distributed uniformly. I don't know. Either way, uh, we're going to reference uh, the object. So I'm going to instance this object that we can make uh, shade smooth. And you can see we have a bunch of them now. And just to make it look better, bump up this number to like, I don't know, 7,000. Increase the randomness so some particles come in bigger and smaller than others. And then uh, finally, enable rotation so that they're not on the same orientation, right? So we can increase the phase and randomization and stuff like that. Okay, uh, so now we have a bunch of dots that, you know, cover the thing. And it kind of looks real. I mean, we, we can do most of this in rendering. I'm going to make it a bit uh, bigger. Um, point is, we have actually... Hold up, hold your horses, hold on just one moment. You don't have dots where the bite is. Let's take care of that and then I'll go on my spiel. Um, so we need the particles to not spawn in uh, there. Uh, you can do it with vertex groups or texture paint. I think uh, vertex groups is gonna be the way I'm gonna do it. What I was about to say, right, is we're gonna make it look good in rendering, but you can't make uh, the particles look good if they're not in the right spot, okay? Uh, so disable particles, vertex groups, I'm gonna make one. I'm gonna call this the uh, bite group because I wanna define where the bite is and say, don't spawn particles there. Uh, go to weight paint, so whatever we do here is going to be inherited by the spite group. I'm just going to roughly, doesn't have to be perfect, just roughly highlight this area of the bite, because we want to say this is where particles can't be. And then just to clean this up a bit more, subtract, get rid of all the edge ones, so that we do have particles on the uh, actual main surface of it. Doesn't need to be perfect. I mean, the more you clean this up, the better, yes, but whatever. Um, one thing you can do... Just a tip, uh, you can use a blur brush or smooth brush or something like this uh, just to make it better, or you can use the uh, smooth command. I used this one recently in the, um, what was it, the hair tutorial, the mustache tutorial. For this, I'm just going to use blur brush. Okay, so now we have that uh, vertex group, and what's the point of this? Uh, the point is, when we re-enable our particles, at least make them uh, visible, uh, then in the bottom in vertex groups, you can apply the density to this. In other words, where is it going to apply? at the bite, you take it, you invert it, you're good, okay? I mean, it's not 100% perfect, like there's some dots here, uh, which you could correct if you really cared. Uh, you could correct by just making it a bit more intense, not with the subtract, but with the add brush. You just make it a bit more intense, right? The redder it is, the less likely it is to spawn there. Um, but I think generally this is okay. Okay, uh, so cool, we have the dots, we have the thing, how do we make it look good? Well. First of all, uh, let's change our uh, render engine to something that look, looks good. I'm going to use cycles uh, because I like path tracing. I don't like Eevee's bullshit. Okay, I've had enough of it, okay? I'm, I'm going to speak up. Fuck, fuck Eevee. Not really, though. I like Eevee. Uh, I'm switching over to cycles, okay? Film, transparent. This is so our background is invisible. Uh, why am I doing that? It's because we're going to do HDRI lighting. So I deleted the light, uh, film transparent, 
environment texture, load in an HDRI. I get mine from where? HDRI Haven and Amazon. <laughs> um, just pick an HDRI that you like and immediately, right? This, this is kind of like the litmus test of should I just restart immediately? If your model already looks good without any of the materials, right? Just ambient occlusion and shadows and shit, it's all white. If it still looks good, you're in the clear, okay? Because now we're only going to up the realism with the colors, right? So if it already looks good, and then, uh, you know, get excited, okay? Uh, first thing we want to do is make these dots multicolored, almost like a random uh, distribution. In fact, we are going to do it randomly, but you could control it a bit more. Uh, to do this, uh, again, this particle is what's being instanced over the uh, surface, which means anything we do to this is going to be inherited by all these particles, okay? Uh, but we do want some randomness. And instead of using like particle info, uh, we can use object info because object info has this random socket, which gives a number between zero and one for each object. So uh, you can see now each of these has a different color because uh, random info is a member. It's a node in all of these uh, instance particles and each one is seen as its own object. So it has its own random number. I think another way you can do this again is something like particle info. Let's see if that works as well. I mean, this one gives you a bit more information, uh, but you can see we do have this uh, random, although it does give you stuff like location and stuff like that that you couldn't get normally. Uh, I don't care about that though. So I'm just gonna use random. Uh, random, we're gonna use that for the base color and uh, actually uh, see that. So now you can see the BSDF is inheriting these colors, uh, but what colors do we want them to be? Probably not black and white. Uh, we can just modify this gradient, right? Because these random numbers are a bunch of zero to one thing. So they're all falling inside this interval. I'm just gonna remap them to uh, colors that make sense. So you uh, hover over this, you hit E for, for what? For extract, I don't fucking know. <laughs> and then you just uh, pick colors from the actual thing. And uh, that, that's the way you uh, sample colors. Um, so I'm just going to add a middle handle, make this one, uh, I'm going to do this. Yeah, dude. Can you come out? Why? Because someone's here because of your bidet. There's a wrench? Why the fuck did I order a wrench? No, dude, not a wrench. There's a guy here because it's leaking. I'm back. Apparently I installed a bidet incorrectly in the, uh, well, well, whatever. <laughs> That's neither here or there. Uh, so what were we doing? We were uh, customizing particle stuff. Uh, yeah. Uh, so this color ramp, I'm just going to pick a custom color, like a custom shade of pink or something like that. And again, what's happening here is it's using this random object info thing uh, to generate random numbers. They're getting filtered through this color ramp, inheriting these colors, and then uh, BSDF stuff. Okay. Um, already, it kind of looks almost completed. I mean, I guess all we need is that uh, pink bite thing in the middle. Uh, and for that, you know, you could either do that procedurally with, uh, I mean, let me just show you how you would do it. I'm not going to do it because it's probably not the best way to work. Uh, use something like generated coordinates, separate by X, Y, Z, and then you can like use these things to isolate this region uh, with something like math, compare, like this. Oh, am I, am I, am I on the wrong one? No. Yes, I was, <laughs> I was uh, doing this to the wrong thing. Let's try that again. Take this, copy. Dude, I'm just flustered right now. I'm at, a, I'm at a loss for words after that whole bidet nonsense. Maybe I'll explain it later. Uh, for this, what was the point? I'm making a material, isolating that area with compare node. And you can see we can uh, separate this on the Y axis, the X axis, stuff like this. But uh, I want to do it not procedurally because that sounds like a lot of work. Uh, we need to isolate this area so that we can make it more pink is the point. Uh, to do that, we're going to do it via texture paint. And before we texture paint, we just got to make sure we have a good UV map. Uh, this is probably fine, but just in case you smart UV project, it can be a mess. It really doesn't matter, okay? Uh, because uh, this kind of stuff only matters if you're like texturing and like, I don't know, Photoshop or something, right? We're going to be literally painting on top of the model. So any kind of unwrap is fine. Texture paint. Uh, with texture paint, we are going to go to single image, create one, and we're going to call this the bite mask because that's what it is. And uh, with the bite mask, you just kind of paint the area where there is a bite. Uh, don't worry too much about the fall off that we could control procedurally with a node. Uh, but you can see we're just isolating this area on the UV map. So I think uh, that should be pretty good. Uh, at this point, you do want to make sure you like save this out. Otherwise, the image doesn't get saved. There's like a weird thing about that. So you got to like image, save as, and then like, I don't know, throw that on the desktop, bite mask. Uh, make sure you do a save. But anyways, uh, once you have that, we are going to import in this image. That's going to be our bite mask. So again, it's isolating this area. We use this for the base color saying in some areas it should be one color and in some areas it should be another, right? This AB situation. And uh, just like last time, I guess instead of a color ramp, we use something like a mix RGB should be fine. Um, and we could do something like 
I don't know. Well, first of all, this should be the factor, uh, but we could do something like white for the exterior because that's, uh, let's see the reference. You see it's white on the exterior and pink on the interior. I guess we could just sample this. So E for extract or whatever, and uh, we sampled it. Uh, just to make this a bit of a harsher thing, because again, I said you could do this uh, without texture paint. Uh, you just send this through a math node, something like either greater than is like a nice way to make a quick cutoff. Or if you want something that still has a bit of blur, but isn't as intense, uh, you take power and you bring it to any number that's above one. Um, this way you can see this is before and this is uh, after, it just tightens it up a bit. And you could go uh, crazy with this, right? Uh, but that should be pretty good. We could also do a tiny bit of a subtraction before just so we could eat into that mask just a little like that. Um, and what else, what else? Uh, it should be a bit bumpier here. So let's uh, do that as well. We could do noise. And this is just not, dude, I literally typed in boy. I didn't even, <laughs> didn't even mean to. I'm just a natural fret boy at heart. Uh, noise texture, we're gonna make this uh, a dense noise texture and give it some bump um, and use this for the normal mapping. And again, what this does, is it uh, basically creates not displacement information, but just bump information, like normal information. We're converting this uh, float uh, stuff into, why is it not showing? Why is that not showing? Oh, it's because, no, make sure that's going through height. That's important. There we go. Um, it's gonna convert this float information into actual normal information using some like gradient differential calculus, whatever. Uh, don't worry about it too much. Take this. Make it less intense so it doesn't look crazy. Um, and then I think we only want this in the interior. Let's see the reference. I guess it is everywhere, but it is more noticeable there. Um, if you only wanted it in the interior, I don't think we are gonna do that, but if you uh, want that, you just take math and then you multiply by the uh, texture or the filtered version of the texture. Uh, that way we're saying we want this uh, noise stuff, but only uh, where we have our mask, okay? Um, so that's just gonna add in a bit of noise mapping. Okay, so we have the bite, we have the particles. What else can we do? Uh, popsicle uh, should be pretty easy. So this is gonna be a wood material. Uh, long story short, to make a popsicle, all you need is first of all to pick a BSDF with roughly the right popsicle color. Um, I don't know, something like that's fine. Make it slightly less reflective. So I don't know, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. Uh, and uh, also, what else? Also probably a bit of normal mapping, okay? Uh, fastest way to do this, wave texture. Take the wave texture <laughs> and maybe use, uh, I mean, this is pretty distorted because of the edit mode stuff. Maybe use object coordinates. So we'll use object coordinates. Uh, bring up the scale, add a bit of distortion. Distortion's what's gonna make it look like wood grain. Bump the detail, bump the roughness, and uh, there you go. You just convert this into normal mapping. Okay, that's the idea here. Uh, because wood, at least the way we're gonna make it for a popsicle. It's just gonna be one color with a bit of like surface variation, right? Is the point of that. So I'm just gonna make that strength a little less intense. And now we kind of have a popsicle that again is a separate object. So you can have the sticking out a bit more until it looks roughly to scale. Uh, but other than that, let's see, is there anything else we'd wanna add to this? We have the particles, we have the bite. And again, at, at this point, you can really change almost everything, right? The bite is set in geometry wise, but you can always update this texture. Uh, with the particle settings, we haven't applied it, right? So you could just go back and change the number of particles anytime. So if there's like too many dots, you bring it down, uh, do some more scale variation and stuff like that, which is something I do wanna do, a bit more scale variation but that makes me want to increase the particles again. Um, you can go back and forth and make it look better or worse or whatever, but uh, this is the essence of how you want to make this thing. Just one final note, um, if you want to turn this into one object, make sure you apply your particles, like you make them real or you convert them, because if you do not do that and you just like join these objects because you want it to be one mesh, um, it's gonna start making dots over the popsicle because we haven't defined a vertex group to say, you know, don't put it there. But uh, there you go. Uh, you didn't know how to make a strawberry popsicle cake thing before, but now you do, you're welcome. Uh, what, what am I looking at at the right? Is it a list of all these dots on the, no, it's a patron, something like 680, 690. Uh, make sure to put patrons in the credits because they are funding these tutorials, but why are they patrons and why should you maybe be one? Well, uh, first of all, I already mentioned they get blend files like this one. I'm gonna clean it up a bit more, give it nice naming uh, conventions, make sure we don't have textures we don't need, stuff like this. 
uh, all the blends that I've ever made, you can get via Patreon, even with a mon one month subscription. You can just go there, download a bunch of stuff. Also exclusive tutorials at a different tier, right? Tutorials I don't upload to this channel or CG Matter or anything like that. Uh, behind the scenes, early access sometimes if I'm ahead of schedule, which right now I am not. <laughs> um, but there's a whole bunch of shit over there. If you are interested, go check it out. If you are not, do not go check it out. It's pretty simple. <laughs> Don't need to do anything you don't want to do. So that exists. Get the blend over there if you care. But otherwise, uh, thank you, patrons, th everybody else as well. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something and uh, got to go fix the bidet, although I'm not the one taking care of it. So uh, see you.